driving over to the holdouts, the guys that are still here. We're gonna talk to John Humbert in a minute because his airplane is awesome and so is he. Let's go flying. Boom! All right, everybody, welcome to the vlog. Corey Robin here with John Humbert. He is one of the new entries this year at the Oshkosh Stoll demo team. John, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you. Show us your sweet airplane. So my plane. I'm John Humbert, I'm out of Cleveland, Tennessee, just outside of Chattanooga, uh, Lower Smoky Mountains. We have a Stoll Bandits group, there are about a dozen of us, and if you go to my, if you go to my Facebook page, the Super 701, and, and on YouTube too, you can see some of our flying around, the, the Lower Smokies and the river, river strips and bluff strips and all that. Um, and I had an opportunity to actually come and yes. fly with you last year, and it was probably one of the most amazing parts of my, I flew across the whole country, had a lot of stops, yours was definitely the highlight of the trip, but tell me how you're able, and what's the secret to your super stole and takeoffs and landings, because you're kicking my butt in a very expensive airplane, what is, what is this thing got under the hood, what are, what's going on here? <laughs> So I'm, I'm still a fairly new pilot myself. It's, you know, it's, someday I'll learn to fly this plane. I've got my takeoffs, I think, pretty consistent and good. Uh, landings, I'm still working on. Whoa! A little too much power. Boom, right on the line, right after the line. Uh, it's, it's tough to get the angle of attack I really want to be able to have, have what I need to be able to compete with, you know, the Steve Hendrys and that, that type of the world. So what kind of an airplane is it? What's the make, the model? Did you build it? Okay, so, yep, I, this is, we dubbed it the Super 701 because I'm using 130 horsepower UL power. So this is a Zenith 701 kit. It's a standard, everything standard about it. I've just, I've built it and we call it the Super because of the 130 horse. Okay, so the You're, UL engine, that's a, a fairly unknown engine manufacturer, but it's a little, it's a bigger bore. It's a bigger yes. bore engine, kind of maybe somewhere in the middle between the Rotax world and the Lycoming world, is right, that right? right. So it's, yeah, so the UL Power is Belgian made. It's just outside of Germany. Uh, it's a boxer style and they use a big bore and a short stroke. Um, this helicopter. Uh, I love airplane <laughs> noise. So we're, we're out here at yeah. the ultralight field and so airplane noise is <laughs> part of the course. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it, it's cool. But yeah, big bore, short stroke, so it's 130 horsepower. It's direct drive, no gearbox, any of that kind of stuff. It is fuel injected, so no choke, no mixture, none of that to deal with. Um, air cool, so no water pump, no radiator and water and all that kind of stuff. So, so it's, it's, it's simple, it's, it's, it's lightweight. It's simple like the Lycomings, which is why I love the Lycomings, the bigger bore, the throatier sound, right. the higher torque values. Yep. So you don't have to rev it as high. So what kind of RPMs are you getting? So, okay, so the UL Power is red line at 3,300 RPM. Okay. Gen usually I fly, when I'm cruising, with, especially with you guys are a little bit faster, I'll, I'll pitch it a little different and I'll cruise it 2500 or 2600 rpm oh wow that's what everybody's when, used to in these in yeah these when, when i'm around the farm just playing around home and i'm putt putting around at say 60 to 75 miles per hour i'll be cruising at 1900 or 2000 rpm and it's just like wow. a sewing machine up there just yeah. as smooth as it can be yeah just cruising three you gallons know, I've, per I've, hour i've seen the ul power i've seen their display booth at sun and fun a couple of years ago and i was really impressed with just the quality and the look and feel of the engine. It looks like a fantastic engine. Now, how many hours do you have on it? I'll have 570 by the time I get home. And I mean, so far all okay. I've had to do is check the valves and change the oil. And that's that's all I've had to do to it. Wow, so fantastic. It's... And I've flown with you quite a bit and I'm actually very impressed with the performance. Do you want to walk around and show some of the sure, features in your 701? Um, the, well, the worst part of the build for me was the cowl. I had to custom build the cowl because at the time there wasn't there wasn't a cal available for the UL, the bigger UL, for the small 701. There's, they have a, so they have a 97 horsepower that's shorter stroke and a little bit smaller width. They had that cal available. This was, this was the beast of my project was building the carbon fiber. Yeah, so cal. you did a, you did a custom carbon fiber cowling, which <laughs> I gotta give you props. It is absolutely a beautiful cowling. I appreciate I, that. I think it's just, it's one of the prettiest airplanes on the field, and I've. 
I'm parked right next to you, and so I've had a, a lot of opportunity to, to, to dwell on it and, and think about how he's taking off and landing shorter than me every time. It's disgusting. I'm, and I'm wonderful got, at the same time. <laughs> well, we're having fun. We are having so we much are, fun. We are. This was my first time to fly into Oshkosh. I've driven before, but to be able to have the opportunity to fly in with Corey Robin and come into the grass and not have to mess with all the other stuff, I could just kind of tuck in with the group and uh, do this whole stole demonstration, the Oshkosh Twilight Stole. It's been, yeah. it's been a, this has been a memory of a lifetime for me. Now, it looks like you have a, and you mentioned you adjust the pitch of your propeller. Tell us about, is it a ground adjustable or can you dial it in in the air? Who makes it? So I'm, I'm, tr I'm doing the trial series with Duke. Um, I'm trying their, their prop out with a couple of different blades. Right now I have the swirl blade and it's ground adjustable, so I do have to remove the spanner and adjust them each blade manually. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try one with a little bit wider cord when we get back, they're gonna send it to me. Okay. Duke makes a quick adjust, ground adjustable hub. Essentially, they take a constant speed hub and they remove all the electronics and electric motor and they have a hole in the end of the spinner. So you can stick a wrench in it and turn it and it turns all okay, three. Like an Allen key a very, or something. Yeah, an Allen key type. Oh, wow, deal. that would be fantastic. So once once wow, we figure out the blade profile we really like, that's probably what I'll wind up with here. So I you can know, I, I, I love seeing that, that small manufacturers like Duke are innovating. They're still coming out with new stuff. And I think that's driven by people like you and me and how popular this backcountry thing is becoming. It is getting very popular. Because that's something that I require in my on my fire on my nose cone anyway i need to have a ground adjustable propeller because yep. i do these competitions and well when you set up for cruise it's a different story when you want to take off it's and a, land short it's a different ball game yeah. yep yep so do sure. you want to take a second and talk to us about maybe why you adjust the pitch your propeller for different circumstances sure sure so so i set it back to cruise this morning so i can head back home and it's the cruise for me, it's mostly for fuel burn and the higher RPM. I don't want to go home turning 3,000 RPM. Okay, so you're say increasing the pitch. Increasing pitch. So to bring uh, it's RPM almost down. like you're, uh, you know, in a on a 10-speed uh, cycle. It's the harder one, the one you don't right. want to start out in. But for stole, you're in more of the granny gear. Yep, we're in the granny gear. So yeah, yeah in the stole, we'll we'll flatten the pitch and we'll get where we can get in the upper RPM band where where usually we see the higher horsepower in these engines. We we can kind of cater it and try to get up, you know, closer to 3,000 RPM or the where the horsepower is the max yeah the propeller is beautiful so I, I, I definitely think that uh, it, it, at least from what I can see and how you're performing uh, you know you did very very well against some world-class guys that have been doing it a long time all these guys that you know probably you and I both look up to for years and Absolutely, years right. and you're hanging with them I mean I think you were what four or five feet I away was, from the podium yeah well I was well, I was actually second place on takeoff the last two nights. So I noticed. I was, you yeah, did, what did you do, a 70-foot something last night? So, I don't Tuesday? remember. I was, well, was, so I was seven feet behind Steve Tuesday night, and I was 15 feet behind him last night on takeoffs. And so, someday I'll learn to land this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird air last night. I got to tell you, I was, I was uh, having a struggle myself, and I, you know, I've, I've been flying a long time and it was just it was challenging conditions for sure with the low light and everything but very impressive performance anything else you want to tell us about your your awesome airplane I, I mean really this thing is it's it's really all stock the mods I have done like I, I followed the the mark Patey did the slotless mod there where the flapperons come through I did the slotless but I haven't done anything to this as far as performance upgrade airfoil wise um, okay very the good the only thing that's really added that might benefit me there i have the fence on the the elevator on the back oh let's take a look at and that it's not it's not big i mostly did it for looks but it has to help some oh yes i see you right on the end of your horizontal here yep, yep. this is the fence you're talking about now yeah. what's the purpose of that for the fans that are watching why would you put you know if you come over here jason and show them this angle how the airfoil is actually inverted on the horizontal yep. and then he's got this fence here. Explain what the purpose of a fence is. So the, fe the fence is keeping the air from flowing off the side. When you're at a steep angle of attack, it's trying to, the air is trying to come, it's trying to blow over the edge of it. And this helps keep the air coming across all the way back to the elevator so you can have that elevator authority all the way through. That's what. That's where we need that high right, angle of attack. Right. So when you're when you're pulling up on that elevator, are you saying that that air is trying to escape the control surface yeah. and you lose some efficiency? So it, what you're trying to do is gain does. it back. Right. Right. So yeah, when I have full up elevator, it's it's trying to trap that air and it's trying to go over. So this forces it 
this this forces it to all or at least more of it go over the elevator and keep that authority the, over the yep. control surface very so good on the next one i'll probably make that a little bit bigger but yeah it, it's i mean that's the only thing at all i've done to keep you know other than stock that's the only thing i've done at all as far as a now you are mod. building another aircraft um, yep so um, can we maybe tease that at some point in the future <laughs> you're going to sell this because we might have fans that are like okay. chomping at the yes. bit yeah I, that's that's my goal um so i'm building two more zeniths oh, I'm, wow. I'm building the super duty which is a three-seater it'll be a fair amount bigger so my oh, wife cool. and daughter and i can all three go and and play mostly local but we might do some long distance stuff too very cool i'm also building another 701 that's highly modified so i'm uh, follow me on youtube and you'll see some videos coming up but i'm taking the fuselage narrowing it i'm shortening it and going to try to drop you know quite a bit of weight from that's what i have now and i think that'll how be how much are you empty right now empty i'm just just a hair over 700 pounds empty and and for what it's worth <laughs> i know Corey, i know for that's what it's awesome. worth <laughs> And this you're this to one's go lighter. built. I'm trying to go lighter. This wow. one's is actually built heavy for a 701. Uh, the factory demo plane has a hundred horse Rotax, and I believe it came in at 595. Wow. So I, I think, and and this one I've you know I've got the full glass panel. I've got it's fully upholstered, baggage around the legs, um, insulated. It's got the, I've got extra bracing in the fuselage and in the wings and that type of stuff to help with what I thought I would need with the oil cannon and I just don't think I really need it but it's wow. it's built on the heavy end of the spectrum and I'm going to try to go I'm going to try to go on the other opposite end for the next but, one and you know that really that really tells me when I when I hear these fantastic numbers it really tells me that the the kit builder the manufacturer of this kit is really doing a great job at their engineering if these builders are able to come out with such lightweight designs even adding to the structures in in what you did right right yeah, yeah they they are really lightweight and zenith you know they're not we're known as the slow airplanes of the bunch um i've had <laughs> i told them at the banquet the other night i've had i've actually had two bird strikes with this plane and they're they're so slow you have to watch out for bird strikes from the back <laughs> so that, that was one of them unfortunately the other bird was still in the tree so you know you, you <laughs> can't avoid that yeah how does that work yeah, and then, we won't yeah get that's, that's we not get pretty <laughs> yeah uh, yeah we like to kid around on that but but they do they do it zenith does a good job uh chris hines has, has recently passed and we had a banquet the other night in his remembrance and it was a really good really good turnout um mm -hmm. remembrance of him and the things he's done to promote aviation and and to promote folks being able to get in for a far less price than what you see to be able to get into the stole stuff you get, and the, you back, get, the backyard You get flyers. the fantastic performance at a lower price point. Yes, so if that's yes. what you're looking for, maybe a Zenith aircraft is right for you. John, how can we find you on social media? Uh, look on Facebook. I'm, you can just the John Humbert or the Super 701 is probably my most common. That's what most of the folks are going to. I also have YouTube Super 701. So that's that's where I post most of my videos and stuff. And like I so say, you'll be able to see the Stoll Bandits uh, fly with me I have the 360 camera, so you'll be able to see around our terrain and some of the places that we went with Corey when he was out with us. Yeah, Lower it's, Smoky it's Mountains. Fantastic, beautiful. He lives in the southern Tennessee area, North Georgia. And man, I just had such a great time with these guys. Make sure you head over to Stoll Bandits. Head over to Super 701. Look for John Humbert on social media. He is somebody to watch. Thank you so much for your time and it for this fun. walk around. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.